Hey, welcome to this uh, shortwave radio channel. And we're going to talk about bandwidths today because bandwidths are available on many receivers. And what it's all about is not clear for a lot of people. So we're going to actually take a look at what it means. So um, first, how do you see a bandwidth switch or what are the possibilities on different receivers? Well, first of all, let's look at one radio here, the XH data. This one has several bandwidths and when I actually choose them with the button here, you'll see them as display. So BW 1.2, 1500 H and then goes back up to 4K at 4, 4 kilohertz. So this one has, is, is cool because it's very flexible. It has, you know, six, four, uh, three, uh, in, 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 in single sideband, it even has up to 500 hertz bandwidth. On other receivers, and most receivers are like this, for example, on the Texan receivers, it has a graphic that shows up right here at the bottom. So under the two here, you see that there's a little line. And if I actually press the bandwidth button, you'll see that the line is wider or it's smaller. So you see two differences below the number two. So there's wide and narrow in this case. Some disguise it as uh, music and news or voice or as a switch. So this one has this type of switch here. This changes the, band the bandwidth. Some of them is audio bandwidth. Some of them is more into the frequency bandwidth. Whatever uh, you choose, what when do you choose narrow when do you choose wide when do how do you use it and what does it do so when you receive a signal set, let's say that i i will actually uh tune a frequency here and tune the frequency to 7090 as you see here okay now a wide bandwidth for a lot of receivers is around five or six kilohertz what does that mean that means that in reality you're listening to um, from 7087 to 7093 here if it's 6 kilohertz. You listen in on 3 kilohertz on each side. Why? Simply because there's information. So voice, music requires a certain bandwidth to go through. If it's too narrow, you won't hear all the frequencies. So the sound's gonna, it's gonna sound weird or it's gonna sound muffled down. And a great example that I can use to show you the difference is with the XH data. So here, if I actually tune in to a um, medium wave signal, so we're gonna go on medium wave, and I tune in to a uh, signal, say on 800 kilohertz, we're gonna show you the differences between the different bandwidths. So here we go, frequency 800, frequency, so, so you will have this and listen to the sound quality as I change the bandwidths for this receiver, so 6 kilohertz wide. Well, Mueller had two years, but Four, even though Trump didn't want it, three, he didn't shut it down. 2.5. The Trudeau liberals have shut down the Justice Committee that have been asking straight up to hear from Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott. Jane Philpott, who also... So, if you noticed the sound as I was actually narrowing the bandwidth, loses some of its fidelity. Some of the higher frequencies are cut off. So what you want to do is use a bandwidth that's large enough to give as much information when you're listening to music. You want to have the biggest bandwidth to get all the frequencies of the music you're, playing, you're listening to. If you listen to voice, the bandwidth can be smaller because voice doesn't have as many frequency response as music, for example. And of course, when you're in single sideband, the voice requirement is even smaller, so there's smaller bandwidths available on some receivers when you're in single sideband. In the case of a wide and a narrow button, and that is the only thing you've got, 
we, the, the rule of thumb is to use the wide when you're listening to international broadcasts and use the narrow filter when you're listening to single sideband because it will narrow down and it will be okay for single sideband. But there's a trick. The narrow filter, because it's smaller, can sometimes be used to eliminate adjacent interference on other frequencies. Say you're listening to Cuba on 6000, and then there's a station that pops up on 6005. With the wide filter, you might actually hear the splatter of 6005 on 6000. By using a smaller filter, you might actually be able to filter out what's happening on 6005. So that's one use also of these filters. A narrow filter will actually listen in. Of course, you'll you lose some audio quality, but you will also make it more difficult or you'll actually clip out a lot of the interference that could be on each side of the frequency you're listening to. On single sideband, it's the same thing. You, um, If you have several filters like I have here on XH Data, you will try to use the biggest, um, the widest one for SSB, which usually for a lot of receivers is like two point, around 2.8 kilohertz or 3 kilohertz. And you can narrow it down 2.2 or 1.8, and you'll still be able to listen in. And if there's too many signals, single sideband signals, say, for example, in a contest, well, you're able to narrow it down to just the signal you're listening and avoid the interference from other signals that are very close to it. So that is the use you're going to have for these bandwidth filters. Either avoid interference or, like I said, if there's no interference, you'll use the wide one for better audio quality, audio fidelity, and you'll use the narrow one when you're listening to single sideband because it's smaller imprint on the, on the scale. And of course, as you see now, the XH data, and even on some higher end receivers like the ICOM and the Yisu that I've got here, you can narrow them down to a very, very small filter because CW, for example, Morse code does not have frequency variations. You can actually narrow it down to a very, very thin 300, 250 kilo, uh, hertz, sorry, not kilohertz, but hertz filter, and you'll have just that Morse code signal and nothing else, no interference from each side. So bandwidth is important. It can do two things. It will help you avoid interference from adjacent frequencies and by narrowing it down. And also, um, like I said, the rule of thumb is because single sideband signals tend to have less information, you'll usually use a, um, a narrow filter for single sideband or Morse code listening. And you'll use the wide uh, setting for listening to music or to international broadcasts to have a better sound quality. And if there's interference from a channel that's close to it, we'll be able to narrow it down by going to the narrow filter. So I hope the explanation is helping you understand what is that wide narrow setting on your radio or the different bandwidth settings that you might have on a more ex expensive radio. And um, of course, like I said, some of them disguise this as you know news and music sometimes it is on the audio side which is not the best filter but it still does the job um, and it's to be used in the uh, circumstances depending on what you're listening to if you enjoy my videos please subscribe give us thumbs up and hope you enjoy these uh, tips and tricks video bye bye